along with how I'm, how I'm doing this. We, of course, want to think of things like where should the origin be? I think that, you know, in the case of this model, again, we have this line of symmetry here. So we're going to want to put the origin right here. So, I mean, let's do this correct, okay? So, guys, welcome to this SolidWorks 3D modeling uh, live solve. We're going to try to solve this model, share with you some tips and tricks, kind of the best way to model up this part using SolidWorks. And one of the first things you want to think of is where should the origin be on this model? And I think in the case of this model, I'll probably put the origin right back here, right along this lower edge, kind of down here in the corner. A lot of the dimensions seem like they're coming from that corner, so I think that makes a lot of sense. And, uh, then we want to kind of come up with the game plan, but I think instead of coming up with a game plan, we're just going to kind of jump right into it today just to make sure that we have enough time for this model. So let's move this over to our second screen. Let's bring up SolidWorks here, and we're going to move this over to our second screen. Let's bring up our keyboard cam so you guys can see all the cool shortcuts that I'm using as we go through here, and let's get into it here. So I'm going to start out by creating a new document. I'm going to use my templates. This is in plain carbon steel and MMGS. So I'm going to start out here by using using my templates, MMGS. And then I think what I'm gonna do is just do a little bit of layout work. So I'm gonna go to the top plane, begin a sketch, and I'm gonna use the midpoint line. I know you guys all love the midpoint line in SolidWorks, the midpoint line. You know, one of my favorite things about the midpoint line is that when we go to draw that line, it doesn't actually give you the full length. So the auto dimension is pretty much useless on that thing. So I guess I'll just kind of eyeball it up here and then I'll hit escape and then I'll S key smart dimension and we'll drop in a dimension here and we'll call that 60. And there we go. There is our overall width of that part. So I think I'll rename that. I'll go over here, I'll do F2 and I'll call that uh, layout line. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll take the uh, front plane and then I'll hold control and I'll drag the front plane over here like so and then drop it on that end point. And then I'll do the same thing in the other direction. So front plane, I'll grab this point over here, drag it over this way and drop it over there. So we can call that um, plane for front profile. And then we'll call this one here, uh, let's see here, plane for rear profile. And then maybe we'll make one more plane here. So we'll take the right plane, hold control, and we'll go over this way and we'll type in 92 there. And that could be something like our plane for max width. Max width, that's pretty good. Oops, not like that. Okay, there we go, that's pretty good. And so now, you know, it's, it's probably pretty obvious what we're gonna do here now. So we'll go to this front profile, begin a sketch, S key line, and we'll single click on this end point here, and then we'll create a line. We'll create this line so it goes up to 50. And that's all we really need, I think, right? Probably pretty obvious to all you guys. That's all we really need, because now we can just exit that sketch, and then we can go to our surfaces toolbar, and we can choose swept surface. So we can take that, that line that we sketched and we can just sweep it right along this layout line that we created. So that's kind of cool. We can just reuse that layout line for our surface sweep. So then we can hit the green check mark. And then to create uh, the, the kind of lower, lower geometry for this part, like the lower face of this part, what we would probably want to do is probably uh, insert features move copy i think this is this probably makes the most sense right so we would go bodies to move copy we'll pick this body here and let's do this as a rotate and we can rotate it about let's rotate it about this lower edge of the surface here and we'll rotate this at negative 90 and boom there we go it's just that easy so now we've got that lower surface there but you know you can tell this surface is not long enough to come out here to the max width so we'll go to our surfacing tools here and then we will choose to do that as an extend surface and we'll take this edge here, and what are we gonna extend it to? We're gonna say up to surface, and look at that, that max width, adding that max width surface in there, already saving us time on creating this model. And we can hit the green check mark, and there we go, that gives us that lower surface. So I think we're pretty good with that set of the geometry. Now we could go here back to this plane for front profile. Let's begin a sketch here, and then let's go to our line command we'll create a line here that starts here at this upper corner and that's going to come over to a distance of 14 and then we'll create another line down here at this corner and that is going to come up to a height of 10 and i think we'll take both of those lines and make them both for construction so we'll take this line here for construction because we don't want those right we don't want those to be part of the feature necessarily um, let's press control one to get to our front view here and then we'll begin another line here This will start at this point come down like so single click move away move back move over again And then we'll type in our radius here 12 enter and then we can single click here and then move over like so and 
Looks like it's not going to let me get horizontal and tangent, so I'll just take tangent and we'll hit escape here. Click on this line, make this horizontal, and then we can take this point and drag it down to here. So that should give us the geometry for our, our front profile. So we'll call this something like uh, geometry for front profile or sketch for front profile. And so now for the rear profile, how can we get that rear profile? Well, probably the most common way that, that most beginner SolidWorks users would do this is they would pick this sketch, they would hold control, pick this plane, let go of control, and then insert derived sketch, insert derived sketch, because derived sketch is gonna make an exact copy of that original sketch, but it's still kind of free to float around. Um, remember, this is what we call that uh, quantum entanglement in the derived sketch video. So let's take this uh, curve here and hold control, pick this point, let go of control, and we'll make that a pierce. And then we can take this line here because now the only thing that's left to lock down is the angle. So we'll take this line here, hold control this line here, we'll make those parallel, and boom, that sketch is nice and fully defined, fully constrained. That's exactly what we want. So now we can exit that sketch, and then we could take those two sketches, and of course, we could boundary surface them together. So here we go, boundary surface, and we're going to boundary surface from here to here. And we're gonna say, we don't wanna merge the tangent faces because we wanna maintain that fillet down there in the corner. And look at that beautiful boundary surface. That looks great. In fact, we love boundary surface. Let's keep using it, right? Boundary surface will go from this edge to this edge. Fill out that top area, enter. I'll press enter again to launch boundary again. I'm just gonna boundary everything. This edge here to this edge here. Enter to finish that command. Oh yeah, that is looking good. Now, one little trick that I like to use when it comes to uh, working with our surface geometry is to do a fill surface. It's really easy if you do a fill surface by doing a right mouse button here and saying select open loop. But right now that open loop is the, the faces of this surface body because you can see I've got a total of five surface bodies here. So what I like to do is take all these surface bodies and knit them together. So knit them all together. So now I've got one surface body and then I can right mouse button here and say select open loop and then boom, it gets all of that geometry. So now I could just jump into a fill surface and just fill in from that open loop. It just saves you having to go around and one at a time, like pick this edge, pick this edge, pick this edge, da, 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 all those extra edges. If you knit everything first, then you can just real easily right mouse button and select open loop. And you might be saying, well, what's the difference between a fill surface and a planar surface in this configuration? And the answer is you could really use either right we could just do this as planar surface as well and so that's looking pretty good now i mean at this point we could also we could run another knit surface command another knit surface command might be helpful uh for us to it looks like we're, we're kind of losing some of this geometry let me uh add some of this stuff to a folder here so you guys can see what's going on at the bottom so we could do another knit surface here and we could knit these guys together of course and i think that's going to look pretty good but now we're going to run into a challenge which is how do we round off the front of this model because the, the front of this model has kind of a rounded off nose so how do we round off the front of that model? And I think probably the most efficient way to do that would be go to the top plane, begin a sketch, orient our view, and then create a three point arc or a center point arc, either one, three point or a center point arc. So it's gonna go from here to here. And then we're gonna say, this is gonna be pick one, hold control, pick the other tangent, pick one, hold control, pick the other tangent, and pick one, hold control, pick the other tangent. Because of course, now we could take that geometry and we could do a surfaces extrude and then once we have that, that new extruded surface there, surface extrude, once we have that new extruded surface there, we could launch a trim command. And the trim would be able to use the mutual trim. So we'll do this as a mutual trim here, standard trim, mutual trim. And we're gonna be mutual trimming using these two surfaces to do the trimming. And then we're gonna say we wanna get rid of this upper section of the arc and then this front nose section of the model. And we hit the green check mark and oh yeah, that is looking fantastic. I am loving this. And so now the only thing that's really left to do is just to do a thicken. So we got to do a thicken here and the thicken uh, parameter is going to be this body here. And this is kind of cool. If you watch over here in the property manager, currently there's no option to thicken to solid. But as soon as I click on this part, I can say thicken to solid. I can say take that whole nice watertight vessel and I can thicken that in and make it all one, con you know, one solid. So, oh yeah, that, that looks good. Now look at that. Now that whole thing is solid. That's what we want. And then, of course, we have to put the hole. There's a hole running through this part. We have to put the hole through this part. So what we would probably do is go top plane, begin a sketch, orient our view, S key, circle, wake up the center point here, single click, 
draw in the size of that hole. Now, this hole is going to be a clearance hole. Um, it's called out as a diameter 35, but it's going to be a clearance hole for a 34 millimeter uh, pipe that's passing through or a uh, uh, a rod that's passing through. So let's extrude that. Let's say that's going to be uh, mid plane and we'll extrude that up like so. So we can kind of visualize what that rod is going to look like as it's passing through there. And let's say don't merge the results. So now you see that we've got this, this part, the original part here. Um, and then we've got this rod that's passing through, which has a diameter of 34 to pass through a 35 millimeter uh, hole. And then we could maybe put in a little uh, a little fillet on here. Let's say you put a one millimeter or maybe we'll maybe make it like a three millimeter fillet here on that rod. And so now <clears throat> what tool are we going to use to punch that hole through that part? You know, a, pretty obvious, right? Pretty obvious to everybody who's watching. We're going to go to the command insert features indent. And the indent command, in case you guys are not familiar, it's a pretty pretty powerful little tool. I can click here on this body here. The target body is this yellow part. And then the tool region could be this part here. And I can say, I want to implement a two millimeter wall thickness. And I want there to be a half millimeter per side clearance where that two millimeter wall thickness is being applied. And basically I take this lower body and I just push it through that upper part there. And so if we look at this thing in a section view, you can see what that ends up looking like. So you can see that we were able to take that that tooling body or, or that the, the tooling body and push it right through that target body and give ourselves a nice two millimeter wall thickness wherever that part is pushing through. That's pretty handy, especially when this geometry is uh, unique, is uh, you know unusual. So we can definitely push it through like that and give it a half millimeter per side clearance. However, in the definition of that indent, let me right mouse button on that indent and say edit feature. We also have the option to just do this as a cut. And so that's the option that we're gonna use. We're gonna say, give us a half millimeter clearance. So that way we take our 34, mil, uh, our, our, uh, 34 millimeter diameter hole, a rod, excuse me, 34 millimeter diameter rod. And then we give it a half millimeter clearance so that when we click on this face here, we can see that that now has the 35 millimeter hole, which is what's being specced out in that drawing. And so now the only thing that's left to do is to go up here in the tree, click on that indent, uh, on that uh, fillet one body, the, the gray, the rod body. You press delete on your keyboard. So you'll notice here that if I, if I press delete on my keyboard, when I go up here and I click on this, a new feature gets added at the bottom of the tree for delete keep bodies. So I click here, I press delete on my keyboard, delete keep bodies, I'm gonna delete that body. So now a new feature was added down here at the bottom of the tree. And so that should pretty much do it for that model. And it looks like if I look at my sensor here, press control Q, I'm coming up with an answer of 601.92. We're gonna call that 602 grams and enter. And let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation and see if we got it correct. And oh yeah, we did it guys, we got it correct. And so I hope that you enjoyed that tutorial on what I think is probably the most efficient way to model geometry like this using SolidWorks. A great beginner's tutorial for anybody who's just getting into the world of SolidWorks. That's definitely the steps that you would want to go through to model up a part like this. And if you enjoyed that tutorial, be sure to hit the like button on this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and be sure to come back for more of these tutorials. All right, and uh, just looking back through it at the chat here, What's the difference between the cut option and the remove and the remove selections option? Let me see here what we are, what feature we're looking at for that. Was that the indent feature? Let's see here. So the